going on, Jerome's? Yes, Minnesota Fighting Vikings quarterback Kirk with Jerome Ezekiel Cousins is the main question for the Vikings this offseason. And, I mean, I mean, this team could go a lot of different directions. They could re-sign Kirk and just go all in trying to build around him for the next couple of years. They could re-sign Kirk and still draft the quarterback of the future. Kirk could walk o and the Vikings could uh, trade up and try and find the quarterback of the future, stick and pick, sign a bridge quarterback. There's... There's literally an infinite number of possibilities for the Vikings this offseason, and it kind of makes it fun, but also kind of makes you a little bit anxious, and you just kind of want things to get underway. But Kirk, I mean, he's adamant that he's going to test the market. He's talked about how he loves here, uh, loves to hear Minnesota. Uh, talked about how he wants to end his career as a Viking. Okay, we'll, we'll see. But uh, w- with Kirk's contract, it does have four void years on the back end. So uh, if the Vikings do allow Cousins to hit his uh, void date, which we'll get to in a second, the Vikings will have $28.5 million dead on the cap in 2024. That's accelerated. If the Vikings sign Kirk to a new deal before that void date, uh, the Vi- uh, it would st- remain prorated over those four years no even after kirk's contract voids and his free agency he could still resign with the vikings and brzezinski could shuffle uh the, the cap to make it a palatable for the next couple of years but that's uh, a bridge we'll cross to when we get there and yes his market valuation uh, is just south of 40 million bucks per year uh but i i do think that if kirk does hit the open market he certainly would uh, have a chance to get a lot more than that in open free agency uh and the vikings I mean, the Vikings will be in the derby, will be in the running, but Kirk could potentially have his suitors, and even even though he's going to be 36 in August, and even coming off that Achilles, uh, he, he certainly could uh, be in demand uh, going forward. So we'll, we'll see what happens there. But in terms of the timeline, so Fran- – the reason why the Vikings can't franchise tag him is because it would be his third franchise tag. Washington tagged him back-to-back seasons, 2016, 2017. So it would be cost prohibitive for the Vikings. Uh, but uh, it, it doesn't matter anyway because it's con- he's still technically under contract. It is not void uh, until after the franchise tag window because contract voids on March 13th. The franchise tag window is uh, February 20th to March 5th. Uh, and then you get into legal tampering period. So even though Kirk is still technically under contract uh, with the the void years uh he him and his agent would be allowed to contact teams uh during that legal tampering period right before the start of the new league year so i i think it's a spot where the vikings need to know sooner rather than later what the hell uh, is going to happen with kirk because it, it really does uh, affect what's going to happen with everything else obviously so if kirk is back I mean, that changes what their draft strategy could and should be and if kirk does sign with someone else the Vikings need to know because Nick Mullins is fine, and I think that he could be a decent bridge quarterback for the Vikings' purposes, especially if Kirk leaves. I think that they would be very heavily incentivized to trade up and find the quarterback of the future. But, I mean, if Kirk takes his sweet-ass time in free agency and gets through the legal tampering period and then gets into the new league year, I mean, some of these free agent quarterbacks that they may want – might be gone. I mean, Russell Wilson is probably going to get cut by the Broncos. It could go that route with the with the league minimum deal with the oddities of his contract, or say the Vikings want to get into you know the Sam Darnold business or Tannehill, Jabroni Brisket, Ty God, uh, and if Cousins takes his time uh, into free agency, the Vikings could miss out on their chosen spot because you know the Vikings could have a, a wink nod arrangement with some of uh, these players' agents like hey. If Kirk doesn't sign here, we'll sign you here. But also, I mean, it's it's a bit like musical chairs. I mean, they're not going to wait forever, especially if there's comparable offers on the table and even spots where, hey, if Kirk leaves, I could be the bridge quarterback for like two seconds. But if you trade up for into the stratosphere for your guy, I'll be a bench slappy. So that's whatever there. And also, speaking of the draft, I mean, the Vikings need to know. Uh, the, the sooner the Vikings know that Kirk isn't going to be back, the, the sooner they can make plans for potentially drafting their quarterback in the future. And also, it could be a spot, too. So, like So say Kirk is gone. Well, say that negotiations have broke down with the Vikings and they know for a fact that Kirk's going to get big money in free agency. The Vikings can just trade up now. Right, so the Vikings can just trade up as soon as they know, and it could be a spot like when the Niners traded up to number three for Trey Lance. Is that hey, we're we're equal on any of the three quarterbacks that fall there. So the Vikings, you know, the rumor trade with New England, 
I mean, they could get this thing done now because who, whatever happens at one, whether the Bears take Williams or someone else trades up for Williams, that's fine. If Washington takes May, that's fine. If they're equal on Williams, May, and Daniels, they could make that trade now and just be happy with whichever of the three falls to them. So they could get that done. And also, if the Vikings are going to trade up to – you know, say seven with Tennessee or five with the Chargers. They're not going to do that uh, before the draft is on because they don't know how the board is going to break down. Also, it gives uh, an opportunity for other teams to leapfrog you. So I, I think that if they're going to trade, it's going to be into the top three uh, before the draft. And if Kirk and and uh, and his agent Mike McCartney maybe they realize that hey, you know what? It's been real. It's been fun. It hasn't been real fun, uh, but we're going to go. We're going to get. Um, you know, three years, 130 million guaranteed from the Falcons or uh, the uh, from from the Falcons or the Patriots or the Steelers or whoever. You know, best of luck to you, Vikings. I mean, the Vikings and, and Kwesi could get a trade done next week, or now, or now, or now, or now, or now. So, yes, I mean, the the timeline is what it is, and Kirk's going to take a sweet ass time, and that's his prerogative, and uh, it, it's up to his agent. Like, does Kirk want to return here? leave a little uh, money on the table because I, I do think the Vikings would have Kirk back at X number of years. And I'd say, say, say the line of demarcation, the, the Rubicon for the Vikings is a, a two-year $45 million deal for each year. So two-year $90 million deal with, say, like 70 guaranteed. All right, so maybe that's a Rubicon for the Vikings. If you can get more than that, God bless you. We'll see you later. But I, I just really hope for the Vikings' sake that this does not drag out because, I mean, where Cousins uh, decides to sign also affects uh, you know, other potential uh, rivals for trading up in the draft because if Cousins signs with Atlanta, let's say, that takes Atlanta off the board for taking a quarterback. Uh, and also, it, it uh, well, probably not going to be Denver. <laughs> Pro, uh, although I mean, say Cousins signs with Vegas, that eliminates them as a team that could potentially leapfrog uh, the Vikings and uh, be in competition for their quarterback of the future. So, you know, w w again, whatever happens, happens with Kirk. Just, I just rather know because we're, we're 26 days away from his contract voiding, and uh, you know, the Vikings and Kirk could sign an extension any at any point. They could do it now 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 uh, but it doesn't seem like that's going to happen unless the Vikings knock his socks off and I, I don't see the Vikings just breaking the bank at this point so I, I think that I, I really hope Kirk Kirk is blown away by an offer on March 11th and then we, we don't have to deal with this and that the Vikings decide to make up their move trade up in the draft sign their bridge quarterback of choice or roll with Mullins and then go from there but it's, it's hurry up and wait right now and things are going to get thick, things are going to get real, and this offseason is going to get super interesting here very shortly. But your thoughts are thoughts. Take a look at the timeline for Kirk Cousins' free agency. Uh, let us know your thoughts and our thoughts in the comment section below. Subscribe for daily Vikings takes. Once more the work, put a little something in the Venmo. But next time, Skull, production value.